so, so then if somebody questions you and asks, well, you know, if you knew that Google was going to be a success, and you knew that eBay was going to be a success, and you knew that Cisco was going to be a success, why did you invest in Webvan? <laughs> you know, didn't you, didn't you think that Lewis Borders, who created Borders Bookstore, was a proven executive? Didn't you think he was a visionary? Didn't you have this great model that people want to spend 20 bucks to get, you know, a can of orange Gina to their house? What was wrong with that? And at that point, what you say is, as a VC, I didn't want to do that deal. That was my partner's. <laughs> so the major point I'm trying to make here is that most people, teams, by definition, really can't be that strong. Indeed, I would make the case that the most interesting companies in the early stage game have totally unproven teams. At the time they were raising money, Google, Cisco, Yahoo, Apple, every major company, eBay I can think of, were unproven. And the teams that are proven, maybe in the semiconductor business, because I don't think you wake up one morning deciding to design a chip. But in most other businesses, I would say the unproven team succeeds, not the proven team. Um, the next, the ninth slide is your projections. I believe projections should be one page. Um, the most companies do 30 pages, as Catherine said, and you know they'll tell you in year five, fifth month, they're going to spend sixty-five dollars and eighty-five cents on pencils, <laughs> and that's the number two pencils. They also have a budget for two and a half pencils, right? Um, I think it's one page, but the most important part of the financial projections is not the numbers of the, the dollar amounts, it is the metrics. So how did you get to that number? So if you're telling me that in year five you're doing $100 million and it's because you have 10% of the people in China using your service, I won't believe you. If you're telling me that in year one you're going to be doing $25 million and you have 10% of the Fortune 500 as your customers, I won't believe you. Right? So you need to tell me that you're getting one customer in year one and doing 25 million. It's the metric that's more important to me. Basically, when I look at entrepreneur projections, I add a year to the shipping date and I divide by 100. And that has really never failed me in their actual numbers. Okay? Add a year, divide by 100. And the last thing is sort of a status and timeline. Where are you? Because lots of entrepreneurs pitch as if you know, they already have the market share, they have the critical mass, and really they're just saying, well, if we were successful, this is where we will be. That's different. Um, so those are the 10 slides. Um, my fifth point is, like uh, many other things, I think you have to drill a lot of holes, that this is a numbers game. And, you know, you think you have this total focus and you know that Michael Moritz is the perfect investor for you. Roughly 10,000 companies a year believe that Michael Moritz of Sequoia is the perfect investor for you. You have to drill a lot of holes because at the end of the day, you either got the money or you didn't. Sequoia's money, Kleiner Perkins' money is arguably better than anybody else's, but at the end of the day, all money is green. And then I'll give you a bonus, the sixth and probably the most important thing I can give you. You can, so the five were, you're doing something worth funding, you can explain it in 15 seconds, you have a clean deal, you have 10 slides, 20 minutes, 30 point PowerPoint, you drill a lot of holes. I can tell you something that usurps and trumps all of this, okay? You're looking at me like, you know, you expect some kind of joke. This is very serious. If you show up at a venture capital firm, and you say, using our credit cards, our family's money, we've invested $100,000, we've used MySQL, PHP, WordPress, Ruby on Rails, Python, whatever it is. We created this site, we opened it up. In the first month, we had 10,000 registrations. In the second month, we had 20,000. In the third month, we had 80,000. We need money to buy servers and to scale. We need to hire an ad force because we have more impressions possible than we can have ads right now. We have excess advertising inventory. We've taken 100,000 bucks and we're just doing so well. We really need capital to grow as opposed to prototype. All bullshit ends there. You can have a 60-slide 60 60 PowerPoint presentation, it doesn't matter. It may take you 10 minutes to explain what you do, it doesn't matter. You may have all kinds of lawsuits pending, it doesn't matter. All that goes away if you show a company where the dogs are already eating the food. 
because at the end of the day, wow, that's what everybody's looking for. We want to see, we, we, we all fantasize about the next Google, right? They come in and they say, wow, you know, we need to buy thousands of Linux boxes because the number of searches is doubling every day. Hallelujah. I mean, once in my career, I would like to fund a company that is scaling too fast. For once, just God, just give me one company that they come in and they say, we need more money to scale, as opposed to, oh, well, we're behind schedule, so we need more money, and this time we'll really finish on time. Um, if you can just show that the dogs are eating the food, everything else doesn't matter, because truly you've proven that you have a fundable and a viable company. And so that would be my five plus one uh, tips for raising early stage capital. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.